Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor in another video podcast. As always, hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about those strange looking white pod things that are hanging on the wings of the 737. What are they? What do they contain? And can you actually arm a 737? Stay tuned. Right, this video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is a website that will make it more fun to learn physics and maths. Now, there's a link to Brilliant.org here in the description, and I will tell you a little bit more about them at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned. Right, guys, so those white looking pods. If you've been looking out to the wing of a 737 and specifically underneath it, you would have noticed that along the side or the under part of the wing, there are these white canoe formed pods. Okay. I've been getting a lot of questions about what those pods are. And essentially, to keep it short, they are le- a trailing edge flap fairings. Okay. Inside of those pods, you will have the jack screw and the, the push rods and all of the mechanism required in order to extend the trailing edge flaps. Okay. Now, the reason that it's called a fairing is because the white pod is there to kind of streamline the air as it's flowing through because the mechanism in itself is really bulky. And if there was no fairing, if there was none of those pods there, uh, it would cause an enormous amount of drag. So why are the mechanisms so bulky then? Well, if you think about it, the trailing edge flaps are there in order to create more lift and to a certain extent more drag for the aircraft. Okay, I've done a separate video about trailing edge and leading edge flaps, which you can check out here in the link. Uh, But essentially what the flaps are trying to do is it's going to change the cord of the wing. It's going to make the cord more bent like this. And it's also going to extend the surface of the wing. Um, If you think about the speed that the trailing edge are being extended, During landing, a 737 will typically land at about 140 to 150 knots. That's 250 to 300 kilometers per hour. So if you if you extend something with as big of a surface as the trailing edge flaps have, it's going to encounter a lot of drag and a lot of force is going to be pushed up to it. That means that the mechanisms who are extending and retracting the flaps have to be really sturdy and really reliable. Now, the way that this is done on the 737 is that we have a hydraulic driven motor that is situated in the center of the wheel well bay. That hydraulic motor is driving uh, torque rods. You can see them actually, I'll show you here. You can see how they're rotating uh, out to the the flap fairings. And inside of the flap fairings, you will have uh, jack screws that will be turned by the rod and they're gonna be be turned out so that it extends the flap with exactly the same speed, okay? The the trailing edge flaps is divided into several sections, so the mechanism in itself uh, also includes a lot of different push rods and things like that to make sure that the flaps are not only extended at the same rate, but also extended into several sections. So why is it so important that the trailing edge flaps have to be extended at the same rate? Well, if you think about it, um, the what they are doing is they're creating an enormous amount of lift and drag on the sides being extended. So if you would have a fault with the trailing edge flaps and it would be extending only on one side, it means that on the side that it's being extended, you would suddenly have a lot more drag and a lot more lift. So if it's not extended on the other side, that would cause the aircraft to bank and it would be hard to almost impossible to control. Okay. So this is why it's driven by one centralized engine or motor. And the idea is that it will always make sure that it's being extended with the same speed. Now, we have something called the flap slat electronic unit, the FSEU, which is monitoring that the trailing edge are being extended at the same rate. And this extend, it's also monitoring some more stops, without, which I will discuss in a second. If the flap slat electronic unit realizes that only one flap is being extended and the others isn't, is going to just stop the motor. 
all right? It's going to stop the motor from extending more flaps because it's actually better and safer to land with almost no flap than to have one flap coming out and the other not. All right, controllability is a big issue. So the FSEU is, is checking that and it's called flap asymmetry. If the flaps are extending at a different rate, it's called a flap asymmetry. There's also something called a flap skew condition. And a flap skew condition is when one part of a flap is being extended at a different rate than the other. That will skew the flap like like that, and it will also cause uh, problems potentially with controllability. So the FSEU is monitoring that the, you know, the different parts of the flaps is also being extended at the correct rate. And once again, if it feels that something is wrong, it would just stop the extension. The next thing that it's also monitoring is uncommanded flap. So if we were flying along and all of a sudden the, um, elect sorry, the hydraulic motor would start to drive the flaps out, that would be bad. So the FSEU is making sure that, you know, what we command the flaps to do is what it's actually doing. Once again, if it feels that something is wrong, it's going to stop the flaps from extending, right? Now, if, if there will be a fault with the hydraulic B system, which is the hydraulic system that is driving the, um, the flaps, then we have a backup. As always, there is a backup on all the systems. And in the case of the trailing edge flaps, it's an electric motor. Now, the electric motor will drive the trailing edge flaps out, but it doesn't have the same monitoring of flap asymmetry and flap skew. Okay, so you have to be very careful if you're using the standby system and you're extending the flap to make sure that you don't get any, um, any asymmetry. Um, we, in the cockpit, we have different checklists in our quick reference handbook. In case we would encounter a problem with the flaps, um, we would have to go through those checklists. And this is a tip that I have for you if you're in the type rating right now. Be very careful when you read these checklists because, like I've already said, there are many different types of potential problems that you might have with flaps. And the, um, the quick reference handbook will give you different options. So make sure that whatever option that you choose actually correspond with the problem that you have because otherwise it's very easy to go wrong go down the wrong path of the checklist and potentially damage the flaps even further all right now the only problems one of the only technical problems of major sort that i've had with the 737 while flying myself has been flap problems and it was actually an indication of a flap asymmetry so when i when we extended flaps one and then extended flaps five the indication that we have in the cockpit, which are two um, arrows, two little needles, showed that one flap was moving, but the other flap was not. So the flap slat electronic unit came in, ceased the operation, okay? And we had to discontinue the approach that we were about to start. We had to go into holding, read through the checklist, and eventually it turned out that it was not a asymmetry. It was actually... Um, some kind of indication fault because that's what it generally tends to be. There are the, the flap slat electronic unit that's getting its input from little micro switches that are sitting on different parts of the flaps. And uh, one of those micro switches just got some dirt in it, got a bit faulty. And that actually indicated or manifested itself as a flap asymmetry. So what we had to do was that we extended the flaps to 15 um, using another checklist and we landed with that, which is not a big problem. The only thing is that with less flap extended, you're gonna need more runway because you're gonna be landing with a higher speed and at a slightly uh, different nose attitude than what you're used to, All right? Not a big deal, but it's one of the few things that I've had, which is major from a technical point of view. So, uh, to the question that I posed in the beginning then, can you arm the 737? Uh, the answer to that is yes. The, uh, the American military, the US military, is actually using the Boeing 737 um, in a military variant. And that one does have, I think it might be air-to-surface missiles, uh, which are hung under the wings. But that is not what these pods are, right? These pods has only to do with the, um, uh, with the trailing edges, uh, trailing edge flaps. And you will actually see these pods on almost any airliner because all airliners, they might have different extension mechanisms, but they all have these pods because it's really important that the trailing edge flaps have a lot of sturdy support as they're being uh, extended into the airstream. 
Right guys, uh, I also promised you that I was going to tell you a little bit about Brilliant.org, but stay tuned. Uh, I, will, I will tell you a little bit about uh, what I want you to do with regards to future videos after this break. Guys, if you're like me, you didn't think that the math classes and the physics classes in school were that fun. And if you feel that way, I highly recommend you to check out Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org will take real life examples and they will bring you quizzes on those examples. And they will also guide you through how to solve those quizzes. By doing so, you will learn the fundamental knowledge needed in the background uh, in order to solve things like this. Um, a course that I would recommend you, for example, is Physics of Every Day. In there you have courses regarding atmospheric pressure systems, which is basically meteorology. And that's something that you will definitely need for your pilot training later on. Now, to sign up and try Brilliant.org is completely free, but the 256 of you who are first to click the link below in this video, you will get 20% discount on the annual fee if you sign up. Okay, So I would recommend you to just go in there, check it out, look at the different courses available. I guarantee you that you'll find something that's interesting. Right guys, if you like this, if you want me to continue to explain more systems, then I want you to tell me that, all right? I need your feedback in order to make sure that this channel is as good as it can possibly be. So write your, um, your comments here in the description of the video, underneath the description in the comments field, or even better, get the Mentor Aviation app, which is my app, it's completely free to use. Um, and you can send me by using the submit feedback function that will send me a direct email with what you think or just go in tag at mentor in the chat and I will be in there. I'm in there every day and I can um, answer your question or your suggestion immediately. So get the Mentor Aviation app or send me a message down here so that we can make sure that this channel continues to be as good as you want it to be. Have an absolutely fantastic day guys and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.